crazy fucking time. What the fuck are you doing here? Wait, 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 wait. Do you really think we have time to do a review in these fucking crazy times? I really just gotta say this straight up. This is not the best time for me. But if we must do this, um, I, you know, I need to clean my weapons anyways. In the meantime, let's talk about The Boys Season 4. Hold on. Before we go any further, take us to DEFCON 1. Now. Oh, it's so much scarier. What the fuck? Full disclosure, we're gonna have spoilers here. I don't normally review series because if I'm being honest with you, I'm a little lazy. I don't like to do episode by episode. People like me, you know, I just prefer to review a two hour movie and call it a day. <laughs> That's the type of reviews we get here at TVH Studios. In case you're wondering why I have the uh, Barack Obama shirt. <sighs> you know, um, also why I'm watching the campaign. You know, as of this recording, it's late July, 2024. <sighs> I'm an American and I have stupid American problems. <laughs> this is an election year and uh, Frankly, this is one unlike I've ever seen before. Things are getting a little scary, so uh, TBH is locking and loading. Oh yeah, for the storyline, I was supposed to be um, cleaning my weapons. Um, yeah. Oh. That's a good shine. It was dirty before. Looks great now. Courtesy of our good friends at Wikipedia, we're gonna read the quick little plot synopsis. Taking place six months after the events of the previous season, Victoria Newman is closer than ever to the Oval Office and under control of Homelander, comma, who is consolidating his power. With only months to live, Billy Butcher must find a way to work with the boys who are fed up with his lies comma if they want to save the world before it's too late since we're reviewing the series we're just gonna break this up a little bit let's go into the characters before i really get into the plot lines and then we'll connect that somehow later on the titular the boys let's start with them as i read in the description earlier butcher is on the verge of death in this season so mm actually steps in as leader of the boys this time and honestly, it's probably even better. It's actually nice to have someone with a moral compass in charge of this team. Don't get me wrong, Butcher definitely gets shit done, but man, he is not a good person. MM at least tries, you know, he has a daughter, he has a family he needs to worry about. Butcher, man, just, oof. Oi! Yo, 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 before we move on to the next character, hold on. Um, I want to say, I love the development of M.M. in this season. <laughs> uh, okay. In the previous seasons, y'all, this character was hella OCD. We see early on that he's been reading a book called Conquering OCD, so he's clearly been working on that. Uh, unfortunately, he develops panic attacks. <laughs> At one point, he actually goes to the hospital for it and is diagnosed with them. It's actually a lot of character development because <laughs> frankly he's in these impossible situations and you know, the last thing you wanna think about is you being the fucking problem. You have to worry about shit like, you know, whenever your team needs you, you're not able to support them because you're having a hissy fit. I am someone who's had panic attacks, anxiety attacks, whatever you wanna call them. I've had several of them in my life and yeah, no, they fucking suck. Uh, the most recent one, uh, the, the most recent big one, I should say, happened while I was at work a couple months back, and I had, someone had to help me up and you know get me to a chair. They had to give me some orange juice. <laughs> like it was, it was not pretty. Speaking of not pretty, <laughs> this is not really at the actor Laz Alonso. Very handsome guy, but. Uh, 
What the fuck are they doing to my man's facial hair? Like, what are we doing here? The continuity is all fucked up, people. <laughs> sometimes he'll just have a stash. Sometimes just the, the fucking solar patch. A goatee, maybe, and then a beard. How does, how does that work? I feel like each episode he was losing a chunk. Like, you know, maybe... In episode one, he had a full beard that connected. In episode two, maybe he lost some of the side hair, grew it out his goatee. By episode ten or whatever, he just he just reduced it a little little patch here. It's really fucking distracting. Man, Huey's storyline in this season. I'm gonna be honest with you folks, it hit home. <laughs> Long story short, we are introduced to his mother in this season, whereas his father has been, you know, a minor character in the previous seasons, played by Simon Pegg, by the way. Sadly, his father has a stroke, and he is... Man, this one's rough, I ain't gonna lie to you. This is one of my favorite episodes so far. But, uh, long story short, ends with this character being euthanized by Huey and Huey's mom. I'm blanking on her name. <laughs> But I know she was in red with Bruce Willis. I thought she was gonna be a bad guy in this season. I mean, I guess she could turn around and you know fuck Huey over next season. But in the meantime, uh, their dynamic is great. Man, the scenes with the dad is just—it's fucking brutal. <laughs> it's also hilarious at times too. Uh, <laughs> dad accidentally kills someone in a horrible way. At, I, I just, I wish I could show you this shit. <laughs> I won't be showing hardly anything in this damn video. This show is just that gross. Next up, we have Starlight. Her major plot point, oh man, this is, this is gonna hit home for a lot of people, uh, especially in this political period that we're in, where it's uh, abortion laws are sometimes fluctuating back and forth. You know, some states is legal, some are not. The country's really divided. Her major storyline is, uh, it turns out in between seasons she had an abortion and it was kept hush-hush, which is her fucking business. I, don't get me into that. Uh, anyway, her secret gets let out by <laughs> one of the worst slash best new characters in the season. Uh, the character's name is Firecracker. Oh man, I, there's so many parallels that she's similar to in our real world right now as I live and breathe. <laughs> Don't have time for that as well. I despise the character, but I love that performance. The, the actor's doing really great. <laughs> I just, I hate her. Ugh. Frenchie, oh man, Frenchie is fucking up, okay? <sighs> Let me just tell you right now, Frenchie is not a great person as well. Like Butcher, he gets shit done, but you know, I'd be careful. <laughs> At some point in his life, Frenchie ends up killing some guy's family. And uh, later on, he ends up hanging out with the guy. I guess, I don't know, to keep tabs on. I don't know. He ends up falling in deep with them, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Not the character deep. But, um, you know, him and Colin is the character's name. Him and Colin get really close. Like, come on, Frenchie. No, this is, no. I, this is unacceptable, dude. I mean, the things that you've done to this person. <sighs> Kamiko, overpowered as fuck. <laughs> but still a great character, nonetheless. I was very clearly getting upset at some points because the, the, the show would just right around her ability to overcome anything <laughs> not calling her mary sue because that's not what we're doing here but it's just like damn i mean she really just could not be killed maybe separate her in bits i don't know is she like wolverine or deadpool she would generate sorry nintendo switch i did not mean to hit you homelander homelander is at his fucking best in this season y'all there's just no way around it. I don't know what to do with this guy, y'all. How are we gonna kill him next season? Are we gonna kill him? I mean, we kinda have to. How? Homelander is on a next fucking level in this season. He's gonna be my MVP, okay? Uh, I will get into why he is later because there is 
someone who probably should have been in this season a little bit more. We'll get into it. Some of my favorite moments come from Homelander. I'm just gonna blatantly say this one line. If you get my reference, let me know in the comments. Are you ready? On one, we go three, two, one. Cilantro. If you know, you know. Uh, one of my favorite episodes entirely was uh, when Homelander went home, essentially. Whew. I was, uh, yeah, I, I was just stiff the entire time. Booty hole just puckered. Sorry, too much information. Straight up, if you want to soak your seat, watch this season. <laughs> the character Victoria Newman. She, this character almost becomes fucking president of the United States. <laughs> Spoiler alert, Butcher kills her in the final episode after she gets outed on live television. Oh, there's so much going on with this character. Um, if I'm being honest with you, I kind of wish they kept her alive just just for next season. Uh, I, don't know, I feel like there was a little bit more we could have done, but man, it, it, it's it's great. She is a legit force in this series. That's probably why I love her character so much. It kind of hurt to see her die. Uh, the Deep, he has a, like a little C or B plot. Deep accidentally kills Tilda Swinton, y'all. Okay, he actually kills the character she's voicing, which is the octopus. If you didn't know, now you know. Those scenes were super weird. There's just no way around that. But it brought a lot of humor to the show. And hey, it's also really fucking brutal. The octopus is talking shit to Deep when she's looking up at him in her aquarium. Don't talk shit when you have to look up at the person who could fuck you up if they wanted to. Don't do that. Don't talk shit like that. Sister Sage. One of my favorite characters of this season. Uh, she much prefers to just go by Sage, but you know, she's black, so you know, they have to have something in there. A little zest, if you will, because you know how you white people are. Sage is the smartest person on earth, and she knows it. There's no way around that as well. I loved her and Firecracker's dynamic because Firecracker is a super racist. Sage is super smart and just ahead of the curve. One of my favorite points came from uh, just a couple racially charged moments between the two. <laughs> uh, at one point, Firecracker says to Sage, you're one of the good ones you know we all know what the fuck that means and at another point sage gets firecracker with this line sorry if my delivery isn't on point but she calls firecracker daisy duck dynasty I almost spit out my water next up we have black noir who normally just goes by noir as well once again black character you know how they do it if you didn't see season three you probably don't know that homelander killed the original black noir so this one in season four this is a replacement and uh of course it's not public so easily just swap him out with another guy it's just a dude in the suit <laughs> that's all it is he doesn't talk he's not supposed to at least this one definitely is hilarious. This one has great comedic timing because, yeah, he talks. I laugh my ass off every time. His whole thing is he's just trying to understand the character of Black Noir. <sighs> he's like trying to find motivation of why would I do it this way? And what, you know, what's my approach for this? He's overthinking it. <laughs> just stand there and be a mime. That's what they want at least. Next character I want to talk about is Ryan. Ryan is the son of Homelander and I'm forgetting the mother's name. Uh, she died in the earlier seasons. <sighs> this kid is just torn between what his mother would want, you know, which is what Butcher tries to push him toward, and then what Homelander wants from him currently. This poor kid, it, I mean, he doesn't really have any good direction to go to. I feel like after Homelander, you might have to worry about Butcher. Might be the next biggest threat, so. Ah, poor fucking kid, man. He ends up hurting a few people this season. Most are accidental, but that last one, 
Uh, I don't know, y'all. We might be seeing a possible hill turn for season five. And I think that could add a cool dynamic considering how much I was on Ryan's side for most of his uh, monologue, which he was giving to Butcher and Mallory, who comes back from season three. Yeah, the kid had some fucking points all until he went too far. A-Train. A-Train is a, a bit of a hero in this season. Still a dick, honestly, but uh, he's definitely, you know, turning over a new leaf for this one. The seeds were definitely planted last season with you know, all the shit with his brother and Black Lives Matter. In this season, I'm just now getting a little bit of a connection here. Sir Will Ferrell appears in a fake movie with A-Train and it's titled Training A-Train. It's basically, I don't know, like the blind side or you know, some white savior film. And it's about how, you know, some white dude got the black guy off the streets. You know, he's been drug dealing, hard life, all that shit. It's hilarious. Definitely last but not least, if I'm being honest with you, Ashley is also on my MVP list of this season. I know she's always been this horrible, toxic character, but, uh, she has a little bit of an arc here. She starts to stand up for herself. She ends up, honestly, mostly just stealing the scenes that she's in from other people. <laughs> uh, small spoiler alert, we don't see what happens to her quite at the end here, but just before the camera cuts away, she's injected herself with temporary V. So I guess stay tuned for season five. Can't wait to see what that does to her. <laughs> Is she gonna fucking fight Homelander? Cause I'm not gonna lie to y'all, I really want that somehow. Don't kill her just yet. Oh, uh, it's actually time for my patrol. All right, yeah, I'll be back, y'all. I'm just gonna do a quick round. One of the biggest issues I had with this season, and this is just a personal thing, uh, no Soldier Boy. Okay, sure, we get a little teaser in the end. We see that he's alive. He's been in a cryogenic tube once again. I ain't gonna lie to you folks. Uh, after how big of a presence he was in the last season, they're clearly setting him up for season five, but damn, I, I was kind of let down. And that's just on a personal level because I love the character. At one point in the season, we <laughs> were setting up for a Vought on Ice musical. And that is starring my two favorite Americans of all time. Homelander, number one. Yes, praise Homelander. And Jesus Christ of America. That's in second place, though. Homelander's first, but then Jesus Christ. It ends up with, um, honestly, Jesus is slashing throats, accidentally, of course. Yeah, it uh, really just ends up being a bloodbath. It went from vault on ice to just turning into a giant red slushy. It's really fucked up. Earlier when I referred to Sage, I mentioned how smart she was. All right, so one of my earliest cons is shortly after she's introduced and brought into the seven, the team, um, <laughs> she captures the boys and, you know, Great plan, by the way, it works perfectly, but then she leaves before they're killed. Another con I wanted to get into with Frenchie getting close to Colin, whose family Frenchie had murdered previously. At one point, Colin mentions this distinctive scar that the killer had. <laughs> and honestly, I thought the character actually knew that Frenchie was the killer and had chose to forgive him. No, he distinctively knows about these scars that Frenchie has, and I thought he would have rubbed against them in bed, maybe. But no, the character just didn't know it all, and it was a huge fucking blow. I, I honestly didn't really care for how it was executed, in my opinion. I much preferred Frenchie's uh, storyline with Kamiko. That one had, you know, a proper feeling to it. You know, it had a different type of weight. You know, the... The, uh, that Colin shit is, that's the way too far, Frenchie. No, he, that's off limits. Next up, we have the boys versus Veed Up Chickens, a bull and sheep. <laughs> this is so goddamn bananas. It's bonkers. <laughs> what? 
goddamn sheep flying around. <laughs> Bulletproof chickens. Uh, another con I want to get into. Huey gets tricked by a shapeshifter. <laughs> yeah, this is a plot point for what about two episodes, if I'm not mistaken. At some point, Starlight gets swapped out by a shapeshifter who then holds her, you know, hostage in some locked basement or somewhere. It's honestly baffling to me that Huey didn't notice how strange this version of Starlight was. I mean, you gotta know your fucking partner, people. It's actually really fun, though, because uh, the actor gets to portray Starlight and the shifter, of course. So then she gets to poke fun at her own character and her own portrayal. I feel like she was able to kind of just let loose as, as opposed to being this, you know, moral compass member of the boys who's always trying to do right. I would say it definitely added some layers to her character and yeah, she gets a bump. When the boy starts with a viewer discretion advised, oh, Houston, we have a problem because yeah, this show hits home. It's so fucking close to our real world in America, at least. I, I get why a lot of countries are just laughing at us. <laughs> and I think the last con I really want to get into for this season, at least the one that really griped me at the end, <sighs> this is just a small character building moment, so I get why it's here. Let me just say that before I get into it. So Kamiko and the Shifter are fighting, and they're both OP as fuck. I want to see these people just go at it and destroy each other. Nope. Shifter overpowers Kamiko, you know, takes her out, you know, for a short amount of time. Here comes Starlight, who apparently broke free of her bondage and uh, quickly takes out the Shifter. Apparently, she kills her by, you know, choking her out. Annie, aka Starlight, killing the Shifter that easily kind of negated all what Kamiko just went through. <laughs> it just didn't work for me overall, but like I said, it's a character building moment that they wanted to have. It's very empowering. I will say that. I get it, but eh, we could have written that a little better. This season ends with martial law being evoked after Victoria Newman is killed. Man, fucking brutal. Butcher just, you know, pulled out the fucking Uno reverse card and reveals he has the thing powers. I wish I could show you, but uh, with that being said, uh, Sage, who had all this planned out all along as part of her master plan, at this point in the episode, they're constantly cutting back between the press conference and the boys who are all escaping separately. It's definitely a bittersweet ending. No way around that. You know, things are looking horrible. I'm assuming they're trying to leave the country. And at this point, you know, shit's completely out of control. And then just as you think that they're about to ride off to the sunset, boom, most of them get kidnapped and snatched and brought right back into the fold. And then you get your soldier boy stinger at the end. I waited a whole season just for a cameo. Ugh. That's not their fault. That's my fault for having expectations. So that's not a knock at the show. With that being said, folks, I think it's time to get out of here. Let's give it a rating and then we'll wrap it up. The Boys Season 4 gets a low New Religion rating. Yeah, I absolutely love this season. I'm going to run through the whole series at this point and just, you know, get an idea of where I need to rank these. And that could be a future video at some point. So if you're a fan of that or you're a fan of Gen V, which I also love, definitely need to get into that someday as well. Either way, uh, hit subscribe, leave a comment. I've been the Bad Habits, a.k.a. TVH. And I'm signing out, y'all. Deuces.